Got it. Hi, I'm Steve Barsh from Dream Adventures in Philadelphia, and welcome to our first episode of Dream It Live in 2020. Our guest today is Peter Kilpie, the executive editor of the CyberWire. Peter, thanks for joining us today, where we're going to talk about 2019 Cyber Rewind, what happened in 2019, and what do we think are the big things, the big stories that are going to happen in 2020. Thanks for joining us from the Baltimore area today. How are you? Uh, very good, Steve. Uh, great to connect with you today. Happy great. New Year. Th Happy New Year. Thanks for being on. We, I was trying to figure out, I probably only have a couple, another week that we could say Happy New Year, but it's, it's cool and it's off to, uh, off to a good start, I think. It's uh, mid-January, if you're watching this recorded when we're on. And Peter, again, thanks for being on today. Let's get started and jump right in. Love to learn first a little bit more about you. So can you tell us a little bit about your background? Again, we're going to dive into the trends. What happened in 2019? What's coming in 2020? But get to, get, great to get an idea, you as a guest. What were you doing before the CyberWire, and what are you doing now? Uh, sure. Um, it's actually kind of funny. I didn't come to cyber from the uh, uh, the technical world uh, immediately. I, I'm actually educated as a graphic designer. Uh, right. I went to the Rhode Island School of Design back in the uh, the 1990s. Um, you know, studied basically visual design, and right. uh, I, um, it was uh, uh, probably spent the majority of my career in the user experience domain, um, helping build uh, analytic tools, information management tools, uh, using art, design, visual communication strategies and processes to make um, products that people use better, um, m making things that uh, really decision makers use um, right. to be able to uh, inform themselves, uh, trade information, uh, gather information, um, and I, I hope I, uh, I, I bring some of those skills to the CyberWire uh, today. That that's cool. And by the way, wait, wait, you didn't just go to RISD. You also went to Brown, right? Did I see both? Uh, right. Yeah, but Brown, Brown University and uh, RISD have a great um, uh, right. co-registration uh, process. Right. So right. Uh, it was actually kind of funny. Uh, Brown University, I was able to study uh, uh, Middle Egyptian hieroglyphic writing and uh, archaeology. So. That's so cool. <laughs> it's so cool. Say in a great liberal arts education, you can do anything with it. So it's very cool. So can you talk a little bit? So you started cyber when? It was like Somewhere in the 2010 frame. Uh, CyberWire right? started out in uh, 2012 as right. a, um, uh, as a newsletter. Okay. Um, it it grew from there. It started out uh, pretty regionally, um, but you know, we opened up into a, a public newsletter, and pretty soon uh, was able to get you know readers all over the world. Um, in 2016, we launched the podcast, mm -hmm. uh, and that really took off. Um, you know, we now basically have readers and listeners in, in almost every part of the world. I think uh, only uh, two or three. Three of them are in uh, Madagascar, but um, <laughs> uh, you know it's 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 really uh, interesting for us to see the uh, kind of penetration that we have. When we, we actually started the podcast, it was really funny. We had uh, yeah. no idea who was going to uh, listen to these stories or you know care about what we we're doing, but but very quickly uh, we have. Uh, uh, folks from uh, Fortune 10 companies, some of the biggest uh, cyber players in the industry, wanting to uh, to be on our show. Do, um, do just you, as a little, go ahead. Yeah, no, but CyberWire. So it's daily in the podcast. Those are both daily productions that you're doing. But both daily productions. So we have, a, wow. you know, we've grown since the, you know the being a daily newsletter. You know, we have a right. daily newsletter. Uh, we have a daily podcast. We have a, a weekly program we call Research Saturday. That's mm -hmm. all about uh, threat and vulnerability research uh, that's going on out in the industry. Mm -hmm. um, we have a new program out uh, as of a couple years ago called Hacking Humans. Uh, that's all about the human element in cybersecurity, um, uh, you know, phishing, uh, you know, all the uh, scams that, uh, uh, you know, people fall for. Can, um, we, can you give know. you an idea, like, how, how are you able to say, like, how, who is your core target? And again, we're going to get into 2019 and 2020, but a good reference point. Who is your target audience for both the podcast and CyberWire, the daily, and how Roughly, how big is that audience? I know that you dominate Madagascar. Yeah, uh, but uh, what we are does that we look are like? the leading cybersecurity <laughs> so, outlet in uh, <laughs> in Madagascar. Exactly. Uh, um, basically, we have a, our podcast is a million downloads a month. Um, wow! And, wow! Uh, it's a uh, lot of we, downloads. Yeah, we have uh, um, that's that's across all our programs. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. We have uh, you know our our newsletter is in the tens of thousands. We've mm -hmm. never focused on 
quantity. You know, for right. us, it's uh, quality over quantity. Uh, right. We we absolutely scrape our newsletter. We don't. Uh, I mean, our our, uh, our mailing list for you know right. um, e- emails that aren't working anymore. You know, mm-hmm. dummy emails uh, lists. Uh, we don't uh, buy uh, mm-hmm. names. We don't do that kind of uh, you know uh, targeted marketing. Uh, right. We our our audience um, principally is a lot of decision makers. You know, uh, uh, people cool. who are like uh, you know chief information security officers, I- folks running socks, things like that. Right. Uh, we have right. big, big, big presence in the a- analytic community and threat intelligence. Right. Um, uh, but we, it's actually, um, with that said, it's pretty broad as well. We have uh, folks that are listening in that are students that are just getting to know mm-hmm. the uh, markets, uh, uh, people from venture capital and you know finance organizations who are looking to get to know what's going on. We, we have a little That's bit cool. of something for everybody. We, I, I we can try t- very I can, hard to be accessible. I can tell you this, at Dreamit, you know, so Dream Adventures, what do we do? Right? We, we invest in startups. We do work on three big verticals, of course, we're talking about today, SecureTech. I can tell you the SecureTech Dreamit Team, uh, the team at Dreamit that works on SecureTech, there's three people. They read the daily brief every day. It's like a start of the day to make sure are they on, are they tuned in, what's going on, you know, because we're talking to startups every single day and it's great, it's a great briefing. Okay, let's jump forward a little bit. You've been doing this, but again, before we get into 2019, I want to look a little bit more of a rewind, a little, little trick here. So you've been doing this for seven years and part of what we want to talk about, what were the biggest stories, what were the biggest surprises in 2019? But could you think back over the last seven years that you've been doing CyberWire, and then we'll focus just on 2019, what have been some of the biggest stories or or things that you've seen, the the biggest stories, biggest readership that really caught people's attention in cyber? Well, you know, um, the the folks that follow us, you know, we we, we definitely get, you know, you know, spikes, you know, around, you know, important stories or that mm-hmm. there are things that are happening in the news. Um, but, you know, but really you know, the kind of material that we provide is that daily utility material, the things that right. you need to, you know, brief on before you go, uh, go into your meeting or, mm-hmm. um, you know, talking with customers, uh, things like that. Um, but one of the things that's been interesting just over the years, how in some ways the stories haven't changed. You know, really? the, you know, okay. big, big, big events. I mean, we're still in the middle of the crypto wars, uh, crypto wars, right? You know, right. people are asking about uh, unlocking iPhones and, um, you know, you know, what are we going to do? Well, those have been those right. have been important topics, you know, since the various uh, uh, very earliest days. Interesting. Um, you know, the stories of, of cyber war, too, you know, Stuxnet, you know, and it's right. um uh, it, it start is kind of in that era where we mm-hmm. uh, where we started. It was a big story, you know, and, uh, you know, uh, Stuxnet in and of itself and tools like it are kind of an interesting Pandora's box. And, right, you know, we're right. still talking about those things today, you know, right. uh, particularly, you know, if you look at it in the context of uh, what's happening in Iran um, and, you know, the, the relationship between the U.S. and Iran, those stories are, are coming back and we're talking right. about them again. Right. Um, it, you also what's what's interesting is uh, when, when I looked at your um, initial ideas of what we wanted to talk mm-hmm. about for this program, mm-hmm. I really thought about like, you know, um, you talk about key moments. Um, right. The, it's funny because I, th- I think moments in cybersecurity are moments in the aggregate. You right. know, you look at um, Equifax, for example. I, I was thinking know. of Equifax. The, right? yeah, not, not, not too and long ago. By the way, ago. was that 2018 or 2019? I was trying to remember when Equifax. 2017, I believe. 2017, is, uh, I'm is sorry. When it yeah. actually, I mean, it's been a story even up until this year. You know? Right. So I think some of the settlements happened. Right. Um, just at the end, uh, toward the end of last year, of, you know, what right. was going on. Um, but you would think, you know, with all the, uh, the ire that took place, you know, around that, you know, the, um, things that were going on in uh, mm-hmm. various legislative bodies in the U.S. and, the, you know, j- basically the general outrage that you saw, you would have thought that would be a seminal moment. You know, right. of course, we all talk about it and it's, it's important. But right. what has really changed since? You know, right. you look at the long list of things that have happened, you know, in the years, uh, years since, um, you know, it's it things are, are changing kind of, you know, incrementally, you know, our, our, our awareness of of those kinds of issues and the kinds of companies that have our data and what they're doing with it mm-hmm. and how they're protecting it, how, uh, you know, or, companies or not need protecting to be replaced, it or not protecting <laughs> right. it or selling it. Right. The yeah, classic, so, well, you know, if a product is free, it's because you're the product, right? Oh, That's classic. Uh, absolutely. So wait, let's let's dive in 2019. So what, what would you say if you, you know, I don't know if you could do it on website traffic or most listened to podcast or that type of thing. What were the biggest stories? What were the biggest issues in 2019? And we'll spend 25% of the time and then we'll focus more on 2020. But what did you guys see? You know, you're report- and you're reporting across everything, threats, litigation, vulnerabilities, patches, startups. Right. You know. Well, it's, you know, I guess, you know, you know, starting with breaches, 
you know there um you know uh, there was you know quite a few of them there were, uh, i was actually listening to a um a talk from my colleague uh, dave bittner who's the host of the daily podcast he was talking yeah. at a conference just the other day and he was saying uh, 2019 is as notable for what uh happened as what didn't happen you know uh, people were thinking that this is going to be the year that the big one takes place and that, that's another from, from a breach way. point of view big for, one? yeah bre- breach yeah. point of view uh, mm-hmm. um you know uh, people have been talking about since we've started this thing about the cyber pearl harbor or putting the lights out you know right um you know through an ics attack um right you know, yeah, th- somebody big, going after critical infrastructure and taking right it and, out. and those okay. things really you know um of course a lot of very important breaches happen mm-hmm. um or uh, very visible breaches but they didn't uh you know nothing really you know sort of <laughs> took us all down like a, a uh, people have been uh, worrying over, mm-hmm. um, but you know, you, you know, you start. We started off the year last year with the Marriott breach. You know, that was right. significant. I believe, yeah, it was, sure, uh, l- larger than the uh, the Equifax breach, and right. you know, it was something that was uh, uh, connected to something we all do. Businesses, you know, go to mm-hmm. hotels. We share our information. Um, right. You know, uh, you know, uh, everybody uses. Um, uh, hotels and uh, it was actually funny when I, I was staying in a Sheraton just the, uh, or a Hilton just the other mm-hmm. week and um, I had to reset my password I believe probably because of those uh, uh, oh because interesting of reset your password on your profile account with Hilton yeah, yeah, exactly got it exactly got it. I was checking in I hadn't been in a Hilton for a while and I you know, right. was checking interesting. in and, and had to do that uh, but you know okay well that happened a year ago you know mm-hmm. yes you know you saw the regulatory front you know people were uh you know, uh, are still talking about, you know, what we're going to do about those kinds of things. But, you know, that was important. Uh, and that got a lot of attention on the cyber wire. Um, right. You know, the all the news about Facebook, you know, mm-hmm. has been huge uh, right. o- over the past year. N- news uh, like, like because of, from the political point of view, from selling well, data. Like from... it's a, well, it's, it's actually all of those things. You know, for right. example, there was a story um, of the you know, credentials that were um, uh, left um you know, unequal, in plain text, um, right. there was a, there's the, uh, you know, fallout from uh, Cambridge Analytica is right. still being still. talked about in the context sure. of, of what, uh, what companies are selling. Uh, you look at, uh, you know, the uh, new legislation, you know, that's, uh, that's come forward, you know, in, in California and other places about, you know, ownership of information uh, right. and, and what people are doing with it. And Facebook mm-hmm. is at the center of that. So anytime they're on, you know, Capitol Hill talking or, um, you know, uh, responding to media uh, requests, or they get breached again, or make them, uh, you know, let, leave something uh, uh, exposed. Uh, that uh, that basically comes back, and I think that's a particularly important, you know, topic because it's a, not only about. Um, um, you know the, the impact of the, that, those particular records, but it's an important um, uh, beacon for future businesses. You know, what are they going to do? You know, there's a lot of businesses that, um, you know, their business is getting you to use their product, and then they sell your data. Right. And, you right. know, they, they they basically sell access to you, right. and that's a um, that's a you know sort of a, a fundamental of you know many companies that were sure. startups that are now giants, you know, right. and, um, you know, the, it's a looking at how that is the, you know, business of the future is going to, is, uh, is very important and people are very interested in it. Sure. Do you, did you in 2019 also, like a lot of times we spend so much time, I dream it companies meet with CISOs. They do these customer sprints. They meet with CISOs all over the United States from a CISO point of view, do you, you know, big stories, like I'm even thinking like the capital one breach, there's, yep. there's so many people or what happened you know, for Equifax and, and executives losing their jobs over these issues. Do you, did you see a lot of stories and news either at the on the CISO side? You know, it's, it's a tough role. It's a high paying position. It is a tough role. And oh, my goodness, if something bad happens on your watch, it's hard. Uh, just again, I'm thinking 2019 stories that were their big issues because. Yeah, it's, I think, it's a hard. You know, yeah. You know, the CISO is often the target of opportunity, you know, in, right. in those kinds of uh, um, those kinds of breaches and, and mm-hmm. maybe rightly so, maybe sometimes not. You know, it's a um, security is a, a, a responsibility of, you know, many different people and, and many different groups and different mm-hmm. companies handle uh, things differently. But, you know, from the, you know, the, the CISO definitely is, uh, uh, you know, the stories of what, what happens to them and, and right. uh, you know, what they should be aware of and, and really the uh, transformation of that role i, I don't know, you know how in, in what people, way well, yeah, well what pe- people mean? in the uh you know i don't know how many people uh 
really even thought of a CISO or what is a CISO, right. um, you know, in the you know earliest days of, of cybersecurity. Sure. You know, it's obviously been a role for, for quite some time, but, you know, it used to be a very, or people used to think about it anyway, as a very technical role. And mm-hmm. now that role is sometimes um, talked about as that um, bridge between the board and the, uh, and the technical groups, you know, that are right. running the uh, security. So, you know, whose responsibility is security? You know, um, what should CISOs be thinking about? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, th- those kinds of things definitely are, um, you know, part of the daily fare that, that, that folks right. are, are consuming. I'll tell you, it's interesting too, just one thing that we saw in 2019 from a CISO point of view and just kind of newsy kind of things was how that role just keeps expanding. You know, the, the, it's so vast between mobile and cloud computing and everything. We had a startup go through Dreamit this past year that specializes in protecting call centers, but not, it's from, you know, it, it, phishing scams and phishing attacks, and there's so many other, and spear phishing is getting harder and harder. So now people just call right into the call center and try to attack the company and, and manipulate information by making a call. And all of a sudden we were talking to CISOs about this one particular company, and they're like, wait, I have to protect the call center from a phone call? It's like, it's not electronic, it's just voice. And well, again, I, you, that, that remit, yeah, it's crazy. You, you, uh, you bring up what is an, uh, an extremely important trend. You know, mm-hmm. the, uh, you know security and the, um, you know, various products that uh, startups and you mm-hmm. know, well-entrenched companies are making, those innovations are protecting mm-hmm. us better and better. But unfortunately, right. you know, the human being is still vulnerable. Absolutely. And uh, that is a, a huge uh, vector uh, for attack. And, uh, you know, what we're seeing is that um, security awareness is becoming an, a really important part of the uh, um, sort of public consciousness and the business mm-hmm. consciousness, you know, where, right. where they're, they're, you know, they're really thinking uh, earlier on that, yeah, if I've got my, you know, technical ducks in a row, I'm good. Right. But you know what? You're not, you know, right. can, can you get attacked by a phone call? Yes, you can. Yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, you can get attacked by a text. Right. Um, and and th- those attacks, too, are, are, you know, especially over this last year, you can see them growing even more sophisticated, more targeted. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it, it, maybe it was easier to spot a, uh, you know, phony email from a bank a while ago where the logo is squished and you right. know the, the typography doesn't look you know right. quite as spelling good. Spelling mistakes. Spelling right. mistakes. Yeah. Well, I mean, right. you still you still Grammar see mistakes. a lot of that. Right. Um, but you know, they're getting better and better. You know, uh, we talked a little bit about the social media companies and all the uh, information that's out there uh, right. on us on companies. That information mm-hmm. is used for spear phishing. You know, right. for basically very very targeted attacks that the, uh, people can learn all about us and be able to. Uh, uh, to say something, you know, right. or, or connect with us, though, in a way that we will get attacked. I mean, uh, it's it, uh, we're all human, and yep. we are. We, there is something that's going to get us all. So yeah. uh, it's interesting. I had one last weekend. I got an email from HomeAway, the vacation rental company, mm-hmm. and I was spearfished, like a spear straight through me. And I, it took me a half hour to decide what I should do about the email. I was like, wait, is it real? Is it not real? And finally, when it said, you know, there was no URL to go back to, it said, just reply to this email and please upload your latest credit card statement, a picture of your driver's license, your passport, and something else. I was like, yeah, call bullshit on it, and we're doing that one. <laughs> right. But I, and I was like, oh, crap, they got a tracking cookie, so they saw me open it, but whatever. Um, but it's it's hard. All right, well, so last couple things on 2019. Anything that was the well, biggest surprise? Yeah, I'm sorry. There's yeah. no, no biggest surprise, but I just want to say, if we're yeah. going to you know, talk 2019, uh, yeah. I think... Uh, you know, another thing that in, in addition to the human factors and security that's coming into the, uh, you know, consciousness of, uh, of um, you know, companies and the public mm-hmm. at large is notions of disinformation. Of course, we, you know, we saw all saw what happened in the uh, 2016 uh, uh, elections and mm-hmm. the, the, the Russian uh, propaganda playbook. Uh, yep. we're, um, you know, we're, we're starting to realize the impacts. We're heading into a new uh, election year that's coming up. You know, there are other comp- uh, other countries that are uh, using this playbook and mm-hmm. um, um, it, it, it poses a very serious threat. And again, it's right. through that, uh, that human vector. You know, what is, you know, what's real what is truth what is right. uh, you know what is ground truth and that has been an, an incredibly important story um you know that's been developing you know over the years but it's really starting to sort of uh, come into its own and we're we're talking a lot about it and people are very very right. uh, interested in it be- again beyond the sort of propaganda aspects sure. of it or the human aspects you know we have to look at a future um 
uh, where we're uncertain of data integrity. You know, right. okay, your information gets lost is one thing, or it's it's you know ransomware has uh, uh, has encrypted it. What if your uh, company's data is being slowly manipulated and on um, in ways our government's mm-hmm. information, our, our our financial records, uh, you know, other things that uh, right. could be could be more important. And uh, I think uh, dis the uh, notions of disinformation and uh, data integrity are you know are I think we're really very very important in 2000 and certainly a big a big story in 2019 that's going to roll deeply into 2020 right is yes. deep fakes right everybody i mean we see so many startups that apply to us that are looking to get or they're early stage have a little bit of product but they're attacking the deep fake issue which is such a non-trivial problem to solve it's so hard and of course big companies like facebook right are trying to prevent deep fakes from being on their network and investing a tremendous amount. And again, we see a lot of startups globally going after the deep fake space. So I would expect, again, it got some news in 2019. I think there'll be a lot more in 2020. Is there anything lastly on 2019, just to wrap up and then we'll move to 2020? Uh, yeah, I would yeah, just yeah. say that, you know, we're, you know, um, you know, there's all there's always the lead up to uh, to regulatory change. You know, mm-hmm. with the California legislation going into effect this year, there's there's right. the lead up and looking back at uh, at GDPR and you know the the impacts okay. of that. Watching that get uh, um, you know diff- various companies. Uh, you know, uh, have uh, penalties to absorb, and right. you know, it, it, it's it's been a, a interesting from a a, a regulatory uh, standpoint. And I, I would also just say, and it, it connects back to all the things that we've already talked about, is you know, just coping with the impacts of the the very embedded surveillance that we see in uh, society. You'd mentioned sure. like if your product is free, the you are the product. Right. Um, right. It, it's hard for people to to grasp sometimes, you know, how much we are surveilled, you know, in mm-hmm. society. And that doesn't mean just that there's a camera. Are watching you, right. uh, but your phone is geolocating yeah. you at right. you know yeah. at various Bluetooth points in your day. Sure. What are you doing? Where are you? What do you right. What are you looking at? You know, st- the stories that that have come out about students um, at schools. They're being you know basically electronically monitored. Did they come to class? You know, you know. Oh, uh, I missed What that are they one. doing? And, wow. and and where are they? Yeah, we just did a uh, our uh, law and policy podcast called mm-hmm. Caveat. We just talked about mm-hmm. that uh, this week. Hmm. Um, uh, very very important stories. And, right. you know, there's there's, uh, you know, the the kinds of convenience that comes with uh, the kinds of capabilities that we have right. with our devices, you know, is, is compelling. We like it. Right. We want it. We want our Facebook. Right. We want our phone. We want to we'll pull up our weather app. We want to know right. the weather where we are. Um, but, um, uh, you know, it's, a, yeah, it's an exchange yeah. of data that we're, Absolutely. Uh, that, we're, that we're making. It's a dance. And by the way, in that dance and exchange of data, I'm thinking Brown, I went to University of Michigan, see Brown and Michigan students would be smart enough. They'd say, hey, Peter, do me a favor. If you're going to class today, can you take my phone with me? Because I know they're tracking me, right? Well, it's, um, it's another hack, right? Yeah, but I'm who's in gonna, class today. At least gonna, my phone who's is. Who's going to be without their phone? Uh, yeah, I, that's a good point. It's a good point. OK, so let's, let's, um, let's go into 2020. So what's going to be hot in, in cyber? Look, we're already off to the races and things go on with Iran. We'll talk about that in a little bit. but. What are you expecting for 2020? And we'll even get into startups, categories of startups in a, in a few minutes. And again, if you're, by the way, if you're just joining us, thanks for joining us. Peter Kilpe is our, our guest today from the CyberWire. He's down in the Baltimore area. Steve Barsh from Dream Adventures in Philly. If you're just joining us, please, we love when people in the comments put what city they're streaming in from. If you have questions, please leave them in the comments. We'll take questions for about the last 15 minutes and, and we'll burn through all those questions. So we love to answer audience questions. Um, and Peter, again, thank you for joining us today. 2020, what are you gonna? What are you expecting? What are you seeing? Hot topics, big areas, big issues. Well, uh, I'm gonna sound like a, a, a broken record here, but really, the uh, notions of disinformation, yep. uh, you know, the the human factor, you know, mm-hmm. is is uh, incredibly important. In fact, we we started our own new program uh, recently called Hacking Humans. It's all about the you know, human elements in, in cybersecurity, well, particularly well, for that reason. But what do you talk about? That almost sounds like a, like I don't want to. You don't want people watching it because they're going to learn how to hack humans, or they're just examples in news around what's how humans are being hacked. Well, what do you it's, talk it's, about it's, it's, it's that really a pod, that's a about podcast, info, right? It's a yeah, it's a, a weekly podcast. Uh, weekly. Airs on okay. Thursdays. It's uh, thirty minutes. Um, uh, and I just 30, go to the cyber. Long. I go to thecyberwire.com podcast. Cyberwire.com, and, I can sign and you'll up. see podcasts, okay. and you'll see it, or you can uh, find it wherever your fine podcasts are listed. Okay. You know, All iTunes, right. uh, you know. Um, 
Everywhere you want to listen. Okay. Every, everywhere you want to listen, you know, Hacking Humans is there. But it's really about, um, you know, uh, influence, deception, you know, how right. human beings are, are tricked into what we're, uh, what we're doing. I mean, the you know, earliest programs, we would have interviews with, you know, Lily Hay Newman from Wired Magazine, you mm-hmm. know, t- talking about the uh, Nigerian print scam and its origins and the, oh, you know, the culture around creating, um, you know, those kinds of, um, mm-hmm. you know, uh, deceptions um you know we've had folks you know that are involved in uh you know negotiation for like Mm -hmm. the fbi you know how how we how how we're influenced how we're tricked and and basically looking at the various scams that come our way Mm -hmm. um you know and trying to in a way what we're doing is providing a kind of security awareness uh where people um you know they see these emails every day that they get you know they they hear about uh, particularly like um uh uh E- emails that come from their CEO, business email right. compromise. Right, you know, where, where, yeah, yeah where, where somebody gets the order, hey, you know, can you um, pay this vendor right now? We owe them 50000 and if we don't right. get it, you know, we'll, uh, um, you know, we're, we're going to be in big trouble. So somebody right. pays it, and of course it was fake. Uh, we even had a story on, on Hacking Humans about a law firm uh, mm-hmm. that they were in the, the midst of a negotiation um, with a, uh, doing a settlement. This was a mm-hmm. settlement in the you know sort of million dollar range, and they were getting mm-hmm. very close to doing the final bank transfer. Mm-hmm. Uh, but at the very end, uh, an email was sort of inserted into the conversation. Hold stream. on, I'm going to guess something about a wire transfer instructions. It, it, yeah, it's a, the, the, a change in the account uh, yep. that they were, yeah. were going to use, yeah. um, and a, a very uh, security aware um, mm-hmm. employee at the uh, law office said, "You know what? This sounds weird enough. I'm going to call." Mm-hmm. Um, but, but what they didn't realize is that this was a, a very, very targeted campaign. It was not right. just somebody like, okay, here's the one moment. Let's slip in the new number. Right. Um, they had been insert the um, bad guys had been inserting themselves into the conversation. They had been taking close note of the wow. char- character of the language that the mm-hmm. attorneys use so right. that, um, you know, that they're, that all, all of the stuff that they sent uh, looked legit. In fact, uh, I think one of the attorneys had commented that um, if they had seen these communications that came from the attackers just mm-hmm. in isolation they would have assumed they had written them themselves you know they wow. were that uh, they were that good wow. uh, and they, they had really known what was going to happen you know so, how so it was going to work you're expecting 2020 the human vector human attacks like yeah well it's going to be still big it's going to be it's going to be big you know we see right. it all like you know we look at the uh um the, the you know the um, municipalities as a a, a, a um, uh, target for ransomware and other kinds of um, mm-hmm. kinds of things. That's going to continue to persist. Right. Again, we as a news organization, we try not to prognosticate. Sure, you know, sure. Uh, we're trying to make uh, you know, predictions. It was actually very funny. CyberScoop did a fantastic uh, um, a news piece uh, early on, where uh, at the end of the year, every, all the security vendors put their um, uh, uh, put their uh, predictions together, and they had an AI read them all and you know create an article about it. You know, mm-hmm. it's pretty hilarious. Uh, no, we we get it. We have we get an avalanche of um, you know predictions at the end of the year. In fact, we get an avalanche all, all year long of companies wanting to talk to us and share their you know uh, share their thoughts their on the future. So we, we stay away from predicting, uh, right. but it, there are some things that you know we see happening and we see people so, talking okay. about. So not predicting, but for 2020, this is like what are you hearing from your readers and your sources? So it's not predicting; it's just reporting on it biggest threat vectors of concern besides just human, you know, that human side. Are there, are, are there things that you're hearing about that are certain vectors that people are, are you're already hearing or worried about that are coming? Um, you know, uh, you know, bes- besides the human uh, factor, yeah. which is often like kind of the key to the, um, you know, key to the gateway. Again, sure. I, I, I know I sound like a broken record, but you know, the, wait, the, get the, careful. The, if we have people like under the age of like 25, they don't even know what a record is. Right? <laughs> I use it. So it's like a record scratch. All the it's, people it's know. A, anyway, a glitch in my MP3. Yeah, exactly. You know. <laughs> Very good. Exactly. There's a couple of uh, drop bits. Anyway, I'm sorry. I took you off track. So you know, like just, a but lot, I would say, like, you know, I know I mentioned disinformation as a, <laughs> as a sort of looking back thing that's, that's important. But just look now at what, what's happening in, you know, Hong Kong and Taiwan. Right. Uh, you, you look at the uh, most current, um, you know, uh, difficulties between uh, the Iran, Iran and the U.S. and, mm-hmm. and the various um, uh, 
you know worries that people have over that. Um, I would say when when you you know speak about things like er, Iran and the U.S., mm-hmm. you think back to you know um, ICS attacks like uh, like Stutz, Stuxnet. Um, right. ICS security is becoming um, incredibly important. Uh, you right. can see the concern level rising in in mm-hmm. lots of places. It, it goes through peaks and valleys. Um, one of the things that's uh, um, uh, kind of a um, pain is, uh, mm-hmm. you know, people go crazy over, um, like there's a, an industrial accident of some kind and, you know, people are very, very quick to jump on that and go, is it a cyber attack? That was a cyber right. attack that had to yeah. be a cyber attack. And mm-hmm. oftentimes it turns out it's really just an, an accident is an accident and, you know, or a squirrel put the lights out. Um, but, <laughs> it, but the, the, um, you know, it's it's an incredible ICS uh, industrial control systems. Yeah, yeah. You know, operational technology and and, mm-hmm. and things like that are are incredibly important because they're connected to life and you know, um, you know, all, all hu- human activity. We'll try to bring it back because I know a lot of our audience, probably seventy percent of our audience watching this or listening to this, is probably domestic U.S. But let's just stay international on Iran for a minute. You know, when you think about in twenty twenty, again, what you're hearing from your sources, your readers. When you think about things like Iran, is it, is it more, you know, who needs to be focused? Are, are energies focused differently if you're a corporation versus a government, right? You have a state actor, you know, there's things that you can do against the government. There's things you can do against large corporations to make life absolutely miserable from a cyber warfare. Anything that you're hearing already that people are concerned about that are big top level issues that maybe a CISO is even worried about because of things that are going on in the geopolitical environment internationally, from a 2020 perspective, you, you expect is probably going to be top of mind for people. Yeah, well, sure. The, these uh, the um, the the very interconnectivity that, that businesses have, and the you know uh, the supply chains that exist, and you know the uh, the dependencies that uh, that are in our uh, our digital society, mm-hmm. um, they cause you know plenty of concern. You know, whereas one day you know a company might not be you know, particularly worried about, or, or, you know, on alert about something and then something happens overseas that uh, where, okay, now everybody needs to be, you know, on the alert for, you know, certain kinds of tactics and, you know, procedures and things like that. Um, right. It does cause worry. And, you know, often, you know, times because maybe one company is not, you know, I don't know, um, a particular uh target for uh you know for an attack but maybe they're a uh, an initial target to get mm-hmm. into uh, get into somebody else's system you know they'll, they'll right. target a supplier or mm-hmm. you know or or somebody that's connected or, or cause you know friction in our economy or sure. um, or, or, for or, or a supplier by the to... way in the in the military supply chain right oh, the uh, military absolutely. needs equipment and if you if you can go on the commercial side and get into that supply chain and disrupt it, that can be a problem. So a couple other things in 2020, like from a CISO and CSO point of view, so CISO, Chief Information Security Officer, CSO, Chief Security Officer, that's probably also dealing more generally with the physical domain. Any thoughts for 2020, top issues and topics they're going to be talking about in their staff meeting, staff meetings, whether that's U.S. or around the world? Um, yeah, uh, besides all the things that we've already, we've already uh, talked about, that right. we've already talked about, um, yeah. you know, I, I just think, you know, our, our um, consciousness of privacy and security um, mm-hmm. is um, becoming elevated and, you know, people are, are starting to learn more about the impacts and, you know, being the product versus buying the product. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I think, um, you know, the, the, with the regulatory changes that are starting to uh, to roll into effect that, you know, uh, again, those, California, are, GDPR, yeah, that yeah, type of, yeah, or I mean, other regulatory, even uh, Nevada and others, right. you know, they're, they're, they're really, um, you know, those things will have real uh, impacts for businesses. Mm-hmm. You know, they'll be on the hook, you know, to be able to, you know, to do the things, you know, to commit to the responsibilities that are defined under that, uh, under those kinds of legislations. And, right. um, you know, the, the, those could have um, financial impacts. Um, mm-hmm. They could cause, um, you know, uh, critical changes to the uh, path of development, you know, how organizations are, are building security into what they do, you know, uh, managing risk in general, uh, mm-hmm. working with, uh, you know, being able to make sure that the issues of security are elevated to the board and, you know, that there's, um, you know, proper governance, you know, with regard to security and privacy, all those mm-hmm. things will be, um, you know, uh, a, a, a top of mind for sure. I would also say just, you know, um, you know, uh, may, maybe this is a segue into you mm-hmm. know, talking about startups, you know, sure. but looking at, you know, the universe of products um, that they have, um, 
you know, to, to choose from to help, mm -hmm. you know, protect themselves. Of course, there's the human they, they side. Being, again, CISOs and CSOs. Big yeah, universe CISO, yeah, you know, they're, right. they're, they're, they, have a, they have a lot of choices uh, to make. Right. And, uh, yeah. you know, I think one of the reasons why we've been such an uh, attractive uh, venue for um, CISOs and, and decision mm -hmm. makers like that is because we try to um, separate the signal from the noise. You know, right. what, you know what, what, what is real, what isn't. Uh, we're, uh, as a company, you know, uh, we, we exist in a time and in, uh, in a market that's extremely noisy. You know, uh, every company, we're in the age of content marketing. Every <laughs> cybersecurity company wants to be your news outlet. You know, you right, look right. at this. We're, we're on it's a show today about, you know, cybersecurity. What's, uh, right. what's good, what's not? What do they need to right. know? What don't and, they and it's need to know? A lot of signal, less noise. So on that note, just a quick note. On the, on the show back in, I think it was December, we had Dan Constantino. Dan is the CISO at Penn Medicine based here in Philadelphia, a really large, the number three academic medical center in the U.S., and he said, you know, the number of startups that come at them, it's just, it, it inundates them, right? They, it's like, you know, he's like, I get hundreds of emails every single day from startups and new solutions. He's like, I just, I don't even respond to them anymore. It's just too much. And like what you do, it's like what Dreamit does, right? We do customer sprints, so we'll bring seven startups twice a year to, you know, 20, 30 different CISOs around the United States. And it's just, it's, it's like what you're doing. It's high level of curation to help them cut through the noise and, and get, you know, see some really interesting things. Well, it's um, actually, yeah. I, I will say that's a, a general feedback that we get yeah. from CISOs and, and, and others is that, that the, the kind of noise that typically accompanies uh, traditional marketing tactics is becoming less and less effective. Right. You know, like people who are looking to sell to the CISO are, are, are better off looking for trusted channels. Sure. You know, um, you know basically, you know, speaking at conferences, you right. know, making relationships, uh, besides the, you know, sort of the big booth kind of marketing, you know, it has its place and it, it mm -hmm. serves its purpose. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, you're not going to be able to sell to a, um, you know, a CISO by, uh, you know, uh, Making, trying to make him afraid of what's going to happen. You look a, a, a big impact of the or story. Or she, that you or mentioned. she, CISO, CISO of Comcast, right next door to us, the woman. He or she. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah. absolutely. Sorry, yeah, yeah. you're, you're no, absolutely right. And um, you know, uh, it, it's just, it's a you know they, they don't respond to that kind of sure. uh, th those kinds of uh, tactics. In fact, they're right. they're uh, quite off putting. There, so many companies now put out reports, you know, put out blog posts, do things. They they they, they try to straddle that line of um, mm -hmm. uh, advertorial versus in informational, and it's 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 very very uh, very very tricky, and it's uh, it's causing a lot of folks to. Uh, to tune out, and which sure, of course sure, created I, opportunities yeah. for us as a company. By the way, the way I came at you, he versus she, let's talk about something that you brought up when we were prepping for the show real quick. If Dustin, if you can switch back so we get Peter, let's just talk about women in cyber for a second. Can you talk about that print that's behind you on the wall? I asked uh, you, is yeah. that an Escher? And you said, no, it's not an Escher. What no, is that? No, that is a, uh, uh, every year we hold what's called our Women we, in Cyber. We, we cyber, the CyberWire? We, we, the CyberWire, we yeah, hold yeah. our uh, Women in Cybersecurity um, uh, re uh, reception. Last year it was uh, at the Spy Museum uh, in uh, downtown D.C. Oh, sure, in D.C. You know, yeah, about yeah. Uh, you know, 400 women from, from you know, largely regionally, but, you know, mm -hmm. people have come from, you know, uh, uh, far and wide across the, cool. uh, the U.S. Uh, to, mm -hmm. to be there. It's really, it's, it's not a conference. You know, it's really yep. about connecting people, about, you know, uh, building relationships and things like that. And for us as a company, we, we value diverse voices in our programming. Mm -hmm. um, so it's our opportunity to meet a lot of very interesting women and, you know, people that we might want to have on our show and, and you know, uh, companies like that. The, for the print itself is yeah, yeah. Uh, we do a competition each year for that event. Um, uh, uh, it's an uh, arts commission uh, competition. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the theme of it is is creating connections, which is mm -hmm. the uh, important part about our, our event. And um, we do the um, uh, do the competition and every women, all the women that attend the event are able to take home a, a limited edition uh, signed uh, print. Oh, cool! And the the content that's in the uh, that you can see there in the back, it's a um, it's a network of a particular kind of uh, mushroom, uh, mm. which is uh, becomes the um, the fabric of communication underneath the the forest. So you know, different Didn't you know, know. Uh, different uh, uh, plant life might need more water or is getting right. more sunlight, and this this sort of underground network is what's uh, underpinning the uh, uh, the vibrant forest. I and didn't, uh, that was our uh, um, that was our, guess, our our winner. I guess they're like aspen groves. I didn't know mushrooms commute, communicate underground. Okay, let's go back to startups for for a minute or a couple of minutes. So, 
2020 startups, categories, certain categories of startups that you think your readers and sources are telling are gonna be hot or not, things that'll fade, you know? I mean, we can get as specific as like blockchain, kind of, or, or vulnerability or threat, or you said it's the human side and it's training and awareness. So there's certain categories you're expecting to see in 2020. We talked about voice into data, uh, into call centers. Any certain categories you think that you're gonna see more interest or traction and or certain things fade away a little bit yeah again try not to make predictions here yeah yeah um, it's, it's, it's a, it's a very hearing. very yeah. vibrant community there's a, right. uh, we, we get to see a lot of a lot of startups uh, mm -hmm. a lot of folks are coming to us and trying to uh, you know tell their story um, mm -hmm. this is a reference for anyone who hasn't listened to the cyberwire um, you know our, our program really is uh, editorially based you know mm -hmm. a lot of folks want to you know call us up every day hey I think your listeners want to know about our great new product <laughs> you know, for us it's like okay if you want to hear about your product by an ad um, if you want right. to you know be on our show share some uh insights and the right. appearances on our shows are free um, mm -hmm. you know, we have do have some uh appearances that you can pay for but by mm -hmm. and large uh, we are not a pay-to-play outfit you know yeah ed editorially awesome. go governed you know right. we do uh, you know you know th thousands of interviews we've had a thousand podcasts you know already and how long you've been doing that. it uh, the podcast has been around th about three years. Three years. Oh, right. Yeah. There's 300. So it's five days a week you run that podcast? Well, we have uh, we have multiple shows. Uh, we're doing, there's right. two interviews generally Got it. In, in every show. Wow. Um, you know, we're... we're um, we're doing uh, uh, doing a lot, but people do come to us and we see things. Definitely, I think you know, like if you, if you, you mentioned uh, security awareness, since I had brought that up mm -hmm. several times, um, that is a great uh, great space. There are people doing innovative um, work in it. There's growth. There's a lot of pie seemingly mm -hmm. for for everybody and uh, right. uh, you know chances to innovate. And it's something that really every company needs. And even on the uh, the personal level, uh, security awareness is right. um, extremely valuable. Um, it's been interesting us because we're highly connected to the threat intelligence um, mm -hmm. uh, community a lot of listeners a lot of you know uh, we know all the major you know research uh, organizations that are uh, in security and we have uh, great relationships with them but it's actually very interesting to see how um, threat intelligence is no longer the domain of you know governments and you know uh, large financial institutions and you know uh, basically people with um, uh, big pocketbooks um, but that it's really becoming, you know, something that even smaller organizations are able to uh, to take advantage of. Of course, right. it, you know, creates some confusion in the marketplace. You know, what what's the right amount of threat intelligence for me? How do what is threat intelligence? The difference between information intelligence alerts mm -hmm. and all of that. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's um, you know, but it is actually interesting to see how accessible it's become and how right. even the the language of intelligence itself has become the um, you know, the way we talk about uh, uh, security events. And uh, I, I think there's definitely, uh, at, at least from uh, what we see, a lot of still interest, you know, in those kinds of, you know, solutions um, uh, from various, uh, various companies. So one of, we're going to open it up for questions in about five minutes, and we have about five questions queued up, so it won't take too long to get them to them. But just a little bit more on startups for a minute. Just because you know you're you're an interesting media outlet, and like you said, it's it's more signal to noise, more signal less noise. I think is what you even have on your website for both the podcast and the and the daily. You know, if a startup is reaching out to you, what what's what catches your interest? What's an immediate delete? Is it is it more like adding it adding value, not just pitching your product? Like what what catches? I, your I think that attention? what you said is the uh, is the fundamental. You know, right. our, our rule of thumb is uh, something to say, not something to sell. Got it. Um, you know, when people can come to us um you know imagine that you're you have an opportunity to talk mm -hmm. to you know CISOs from the uh nations of the world's biggest you know banking institutions or the right. you know leaders of threat intelligence shops or large mm -hmm. groups of analysts you know what can you say Mm -hmm. um, that's going to uh, to help them. What perspective can you offer? From you know, people sit you know, they're in their companies. We have no problem with people you know wanting to make a living, and we sell sure. lots of advertising on our uh, right. on our uh, programs. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but what we what we want to focus on is providing value. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, if you can come in from your perch, you know, atop of your company, and go, this is what I can see because of where I am, or or our co our company created a report, and we think some of this information is valuable to others um, that's where um, that's where that that's will catch our attention the immediate right. deletes are often hey 
you know, can we tell your listeners why next gen endpoint solutions are, you know, are the thing of the future? Right. Yeah. Right. You know, uh, delete. Um, <laughs> right. You know, it's, if it's real, it's if it's very self centered, very mm-hmm. advertorial. You know, mm-hmm. um, that's that, that's just not going to work for us because right. as interesting as it may be to learn about you, mm-hmm. um, it's not something that our our, uh, our audience cares about. We have thought about for the future how we might. Um, you know, um, you know, we're, we're an interesting uh, connector in the community. We're, mm-hmm. we're, we're part Absolutely. of lots of different, uh, uh, you know, um, networks. Uh, whereas we might, because we're introduced to a lot of companies, how we mm-hmm. might look to share more startup information in the future. Right. Um, you know, we do, uh, you might get mentioned in our week that was, or uh, we have a mm-hmm. new uh, product coming along called uh, CyberWire Pro, where we're going to mm-hmm. do a little bit more um uh, business reporting um, and you know you might find startup mentions and those mm-hmm. kinds of things um, but you o- will almost never hear us talking about like uh, a product sometimes it, it's interesting enough and we've never mm-hmm. heard of it you know uh, we might do it um, uh, but that's not going to work also just the like uh, in terms of pitching products as a startup don't mm-hmm. give us uh, you know three paragraphs of why we need to be so afraid you know right, right, you know, t- right. Tell, yeah, the tell, falling. Us, right. tell us the tell us the value tell us you right. know what um you know what you think people need to know back it up mm-hmm. you know tell us who you are um you know that's going to be uh, important i think well, actually separating yeah. signal from noise is, is important for a, a lot of startups you know you, yeah. you look at the the number of uh you know the, the kinds of uh, tools people buy they often generate noise you know they, mm-hmm. they're more information than a company can, oh, can right. actively c- uh, right. cope with you know right. how, how do I, how do organizations know what to uh, what what alerts are important right so i was going to say it's well, alert and dashboard it? fatigue right it's yeah, just yeah. like oh my god it's so much right so but there are a lot of companies you know that are uh, you know, exploring ways to create uh, meaningful views for people, sure. meaningful visualizations, meaningful uh, methods of, of sorting, you know, the kinds mm-hmm. of automation that might, you know, um, you know, uh, take advantage of, um, you know, AI and machine learning, which is another another point, too, is uh, actually mm-hmm. my colleague Dave said this great at the uh, at his talk this the past mm-hmm. weekend. But sometimes hype uh, gets in the way of, you know, appreciating the, the value of, of some of the things that have come to cybersecurity. And AI mm-hmm. is a good example of that. You know, just a, a year ago, you know, that was the word on everybody's lips. You know, sure. if you didn't write that, you know, in big, bold right. letters. Machine on learning, website, AI and blockchain. Right. R- right. right. Yeah, blo- <laughs> blockchain as well. Yeah. Um, but it's uh, um, but it's really uh, in some ways done a disservice because those things mm-hmm. are, fu- are fundamental in many ways sure. a, a game changer to how security is done uh, right. but it is not the you know realm of the term- terminator or you know, <laughs> you know true ai is you know some distance off you know right. um but but it is it is fundamental machine learning you you know taking advantage of these uh, incredible tools to be able to look at you mm. know a lot of different data and uh, extract insights is is critical um, but now if somebody says it you know hey we're ai powered you know just you know it it, it, right. it almost make you look much. make you look the other way yeah okay um, one one last 2020 question and i'm going to yep. open up for questions uh, my last 2020 question, and again, I'm not looking for you to prognosticate. It's just, what are you hearing? What's the feel on the street? What do your sources say? I just go back to a very current event in the news, right? So NSA let Microsoft know about a vulnerability instead of taking it in and saying, ooh, we can exploit that. Do you expect to see more of that in 2020 and going forward? Do you think there'll be more stories like that, or that's just a one-off? No, I, I definitely think uh, you'll see more of that. And you can tell even by... Um uh, you know, NSA's uh, sort of more open uh, posture uh, mm. uh, recently that um, that those kinds of things are uh, uh, important. They're on their radar. You know, the uh, you know talk of equities of you know what uh, vulnerabilities to hold on to, what to share. Right. You know, those right. have been uh, important topics of discussion. Actually, in, in many ways, since the very beginning of the sure. uh, beginning of the cyberwire, but even over the last uh, you know few years, um, has become you know increasingly on the radar. And I, I think mm-hmm. you will see uh, you'll see more of that. You know, I think uh, uh, NSA uh, publicly says that they've made a commitment uh, to doing mm-hmm. that kind of thing. Right. Um, and uh, uh, it's definitely stories um, uh, that we'll be watching. You know, we were on some of the, the uh, media calls uh, with mm-hmm. the National Security Agency when they were, cool. you know, starting to talk to the public about these mm-hmm. uh, these kinds of things. And, mm-hmm. and of course, through the grapevine, we'd been able to uh, discern something was coming. Um, and uh, 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 those are important stories, and those those are ones that we particularly focus on and, and, and care a great deal yeah, to uh, talk about. All right, we're going to open it up. We have about 
five questions to burn through. Again, for people that are watching live, or if you want to put it in later, we can try to take them later. Just put your questions in the comments. We'll take them. I'm going to give you the first question coming up here. Um, I get the, a lot, most of these are Peter questions look like. So does CyberWire, uh, and you kind of talked about this early in the show, but the first question is, does CyberWire hear things that concern you about the security of upcoming elections? Uh, yeah, absolutely. There's no, right. I, I can't, you know, point to like specific intelligence. Mm -hmm. We are not a, you know, not a threat intelligence sure. organization, yeah. but, but absolutely there's an extraordinary amount of concern uh, mm -hmm. about the upcoming elections. You know, you've, uh, you know, some of the uh, great reporting on uh, election security has come from uh, uh, Kim Zetter, you know, mm -hmm. um, really, uh, you know, she actually was on our program, you know, sometime right. back uh, talking about this, but, you know, the, mm -hmm. you know, fr from the security of the election devices themselves uh, to right. the integrity of the results um, to, you know, uh, you know, what kinds of mechanisms we you can use, including like, um, you know, uh, paper uh, records, you know, uh, as well as digital records of what we're doing. Um, you know, it's very important. It's something we'll be following along quite closely with, um, you know, uh, especially, I mean, we have been, uh, mm. but it'll only get more intense as the uh, uh, election season in the U.S., um, you know, comes under. If you're, if you're looking uh, internationally too, just, you know, look at Taiwan and, you know, sure. Hong Kong and, did, and other places. Did you see, and maybe, I, you know what? I read it in your newsletter yesterday. Did you see? It's like, did we see? We wrote it. Peter, Pete Buttigieg's CISO re resigned yesterday or yeah. last night or something like that. It's like, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's actually, I'm glad you mentioned that because, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, what, what's Im uh, important to, and kind of novel of what, you, what you're seeing now is looking at election groups talking more openly about, mm -hmm. you know, their security procedures. You know, sure. Reporters themselves are trying to dig, what are you doing you know, right, to protect right, right. the integrity of your, uh, your election uh, right. organization? And that's important. A lot mm -hmm. of uh, uh, kudos to many vendors that are out there. Mm -hmm. They're offering kinds of, you know, free support, you know, to organizations. Some of it may be more self-interested than others, yeah. but but largely, I think it's a, a good-spirited um, uh, effort to sure. help you know protect the integrity of our democracy. Right. No, it's interesting. Okay, let's go to the next question. Next question. Uh, it would be interesting to see what you think. If I'm a CISO, what are the three events you feel I should attend? Like, I'm sure you go to a lot of events. You get an invite, maybe two or three. You know, should I go to RSA in, in San Francisco? You know, end of February. Like, what? What are the ones that, that get you the most excited? I, here's a good, I get, maybe we refine that question, right? It's the signal versus the noise. Where, where can I, anything that, yeah, how would you answer that? I'm looking at the <laughs> well, bottom, the, if you the, see me looking you know, up, I'm looking at uh, the bottom of the screen. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, you know, uh, it's kind of funny. Um, I, I would suggest, you know, Go national, go international, go local. Mm -hmm. You know, try try to get out outside your comfort zone. We go to all of the um, the big shows: RSA, mm -hmm. you know, Black mm -hmm. Hat, you know, Def Con, mm -hmm. you know, some of the uh, B sides events. You know, sure. we've been able to attend those. Uh, also, mm -hmm. you know, sort of uh, you know smaller uh, conferences. You know, put on by you know uh, various groups or vendors. You know, we'll we'll listen into. Or, mm -hmm. uh, but I, I would say I would go to the uh, all of those conferences. I think so the it's big ones. Okay. important to go to RSA and and to Black Hat. Uh, but I think what, what the, the thing to think about in those conferences is where else can you look, you know, besides going to the keynotes, you know, right. um, you know, dive deep, go into one of the uh, the presentations that's, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that's a, perhaps a little bit more technical or um, or, you know, is a little bit off the beaten track and and get to know people. I think the greatest value in those uh, those conferences is the connections that sure. you can make, um, you know, less so the kind of, you know, uh, presentations uh, so that, you, that, that you might see. Also, just getting to know vendors. Sure. If you're rounding out the three, you said one of them international. Anywhere in particular? I have a yeah, we'll go, question you know, for you. you know, uh, although uh, we as an organization haven't been, um, you know, we follow some of these things from afar. Mm -hmm. You know, um, InfoSec Europe, you know, gets mm -hmm. a lot of um, the kudos will be there this year, most likely. Oh, cool. Um, you know, the, uh, you know, uh, Israel has... Um, you know, started, they actually have one toward the end of this month. And I think another one uh, again in the summer, Correct. Um, you know, that would be important to, uh, you, know, uh, you know, sort of get out of your you know, normal zone of, uh, mm -hmm. uh, of seeing what you see. But to me, to me, it's about, about perspective. And when I say go local, you know, go to some of the B sides, you know, go to sure. some of the, uh, your local ones, uh, right. lo lo like, uh, you know, a lot of companies and they, they put them on for business development reasons, you know, or for one reason or another. Uh, but, you know, listen to a panel discussion, you know, between mm -hmm 
a lawyer and a CISO, you know, or you know, somebody to, trying to solve a real problem. I think right. there's a there's a lot of richness at this these conferences, but there's also a lot of noise, and that is the that's the trick, you know, is just right. trying to figure out what's what's going to matter. Right. It's interesting. I've been to the one in Israel. I was at Cyber Week, uh, yeah, Cyber Week a year or two ago yep. at Tel Aviv University, and you know, I don't know there was. 19,000 people there, it was massive. And it was, the distribution was really interesting. Was certainly a lot of Israelis. The number of Asians, Europeans, Americans, and other people from other Middle Eastern countries, and you bump into somebody from you know, Dubai or, or, or Qatar, it's like, wait, what are you doing here in Israel? It's like a little geopolitical. It's like, these guys are good at cyber. That's why we're here. We've got an issue and it's like, sometimes you just have to put things aside because we need to learn. And it's, it's, so it's interesting that you mentioned, you know, Israel, Europe, that type of thing. Okay. Next question, just three more here. Next question, I guess it's actually rolling right off of that one. If I'm a startup, what are the top two or three, this says three events that you feel I should attend? Same, same thing? Um, yeah, I would actually. Um, All right. You know, the, the but big it's so easy to get big, lost in the noise, the, the, right? Is yeah. It, well, the big yeah. conference is like like that. They go, you know, startups go for different reasons. Obviously, sure. you want us uh, to uh, meet folks. I think startups. I think one of your greatest advantages is um, to start like uh, talking beyond mm -hmm. the lecture circuit. You know, mm -hmm. get out there and uh, like uh, you know, I was talking to a CISO from a, a Fortune 10 uh, organization not so long ago, and he mm -hmm. he oftentimes skips the big booths and he goes to the tiny little talk or goes right. to the pubs and you know or gets introductions and tries to meet people or you know um, or she you know it's it's very uh, um, you know I, I think um, rather than sort of going and like bringing your you know, trying to do everything you want to do through a mm. booth, um, just going, being there, meeting people, networking mm. is uh, uh, is incredibly important. But you can also start to, uh, as a startup, learn the lessons of marketing. You, you can walk the, shore, uh, the floors of RSA or Black Hat and you can go, oh my goodness, this all sounds exactly the same. How, 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 do, you know, I, I <laughs> how am I different? Why buyers right. are, are confused. Right. Uh, but it also gives you an example of how you could stand out. You know, what what, what are people doing? What are they mm -hmm. saying? Um, how are they getting their message across? Who's uh, who's winning? Who isn't? And uh, I think the, uh, all of the conferences have uh, um, value, valuable so, perspectives in that so way. So same things for startup, particularly yep. for domestic U.S., right? RSA, DEF CON, Black Hat, that type of thing. Hey, yep. one thing I'm just going to build on that for a split second, then we'll go to the next question. I'm going to use your same language before. If you're giving a talk at a conference, have something to say, not something to sell. Uh, right? I, How many I, times? 70% of the time, it's like, oh, my God, it's a sales pitch. Don't do that. Add value. People understand what you do for a living, right, if you're going to go to an event. Yeah, Do well, it Chris, I think like if, when what we hear from uh, buyers and decision mm -hmm. makers and, and, and others is that mm -hmm. they don't want that. You know, that right. is that that is a huge turnoff. Oh and my I can, God! I, I can you know I, I certainly understand the pressure as a startup. Sure. You got to sell. You right. Got to got to make our numbers. Yeah. You know, these are tried and true you know techniques. Uh, but you know, building relationships, building trust, you know, mm -hmm. is what is uh, uh, what's you know critical to that kind of success, especially sure. if you're trying to sell through um, those kinds of organizations. Uh, those right. kinds of people. Okay, so two more questions. Let's just hit it, and we'll actually probably be done around one o'clock Eastern time as we're uh -huh. as we're on live today. And if people are watching it recorded, next question says, oh, "This is interesting. You report on so much. What has you the most worried, and why?" We've talked a lot. We've talked about patches and vulnerabilities mm -hmm. and Nigerian scams and wires and human. Like, what what keeps you awake at night? Well, I, I think it's those those same uh, same those same principal things that we've talked about. You know, that uh, we're we're entering a new phase. Uh, you know, in society where you know disinformation at scale, in particular, mm -hmm. you know, disinformation mm -hmm. through all the many channels. You know, that you know that we are connected. You know, both socially and economically and everything else. It's uh, um, I think it's a huge issue, and you know, uh, we're, we're we're watching things play out right now, mm -hmm. and it's hard to know where they're going to go. Right. Um, all also, just you know, the notions of um, you know our the the age of surveillance in which we live. You know, mm -hmm. again, not just talking about the you know cameras in your office mm -hmm. or in the hallways, um, but the digital footprints um, that we leave. You know, through right. all of the products that we use. You know, what information are we giving away? You know, mm -hmm. it's it's now becoming part of our consciousness, and some mm -hmm. people don't care about it. You know, they'll right. happily document their entire life, what they <laughs> exactly. like, what they buy, um, everything on who, Facebook, who, who right. they know, what they're afraid right. of. Um, right. And that is a uh, that is a marketing dossier um, mm -hmm. in more nefarious hands. Um, uh, uh, it can be a lot worse. So the, the, the kind of 
digital record that is being built up is extraordinarily uh, concerning. Um, and, you know, it's actually an enormous opportunity for the startups and, you know, the uh, well-entrenched companies out there to help solve some of those um, uh, those problems. The disinformation problem, by the way, yeah. is an extremely hard one to solve. You right. know, you look at even companies with deep pockets like Facebook, you know, how do yeah. you... Uh, how do you counteract misinformation, right. you know, through electronic means? Well, shoot, right. you know, we need to go buy hire a whole bunch of humans. Right. Know, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's um, it's tricky, and that that in itself, you know, creates opportunity, it's, um, but it's also, um, you know, uh, if, quite an important well, fear. On that note, right? It's even YouTube. If remember, they outsource it to to Accenture, but YouTube for a lot of their like, is this is this video good or not? You know, it's the first pass on AI, but. They have humans reviewing videos, trying to decide whether or not it's good or bad, should it go up, should it not, which is just crazy. Okay, last question, then we'll wrap up. This is great. You talked about your, I can see it'll come up on the screen in a minute. You talked about your newsletter, your podcast, and said, Peter, are you hiring and what do you look for? Uh -oh. um, so how big is the team? What I, well, well, thank, thank, you, what it thank you for uh, <laughs> giving us the opportunity sure. to... Uh, uh, to have a little ad for ourselves. Yes, yeah, we are yeah. hiring. As a matter yeah. of fact, um, you know, we're we're uh, we're a tiny team still. We're about uh, uh, 11 people at the mm -hmm. moment, and mm -hmm. uh, we'll grow probably you know 15 or 18 by the end of the year. Oh, um, cool. We're we're looking right now for a, a junior analyst and a mm -hmm. staff writer to join our team. Um, mm -hmm. That person's kind of a a, a a mixed role. Someone who who uh, is very familiar with the uh, um, you know OSINT and you know being able to. Uh, uh, look at a lot of information, pull information from lots of sources, you know, right. be able to shake out the, the um, uh, important elements. Uh, mm -hmm. That's going to be important. Also, just a, that person needs to be a, uh, a standout writer, um, right. editor. Um, uh, also, we're looking for somebody to help us out on the uh, um, ad operations front. Uh, oh, cool. Find both of these things, uh, by the way, on Indeed or on our website. Uh, and right. uh, um, there's a career section. It's actually not linked from the top part of our webpage, which is a flaw we need to fix. Oh. <laughs> uh, but but yeah, if you go to like the about page and look on right. the right hand side, you'll, you'll, see, a, you'll, you'll see a link to our, our open racks. But uh, cool. you know, we, uh, a, lot, a lot of our advertising sells out a year in advance and you know where we uh, can't make enough products to have people fill with uh, uh, to put ads in and uh, we need a little bit of help on that front. So that cool. would be great. And, right. uh, and more right. more things on the on the uh, horizon. Well, that's exciting. It's great to hear you're growing. That's that's a lot of growth in, in one year, and it just says you know you guys are doing a great job, and it's a big interesting field, and there's a lot going on. Okay, let me do some wrap up stuff, and then we'll thank. Let me just hit a couple of things here just to let you know, Peter. Thank you for being on today. That was really helpful, really insightful, um, My pleasure. really interesting to hear your thoughts. Really appreciate it. I'm gonna hit just some last things to let people know about coming up on Dream It and Dream It Live. And just stay with us for a minute, Peter, and then we'll finish. If you're interested in Dream It and what we do, this is our little our little pitch. We don't talk about it too much, but you know we love to invest and build great startups, cybersecurity startups, and secure tech are really big. If you're interested, please apply. Next cohort kicks off in March. As well, we do our video series. This is Dream It Live. We also Dream It Dose. They're usually five to six minutes. They're very intense. They're very short. They're the biggest issues we see startups tripping up with all the time. We released a new one this week. It was called uh, How Not to Bullshit Investors. Um, but if you get a chance, please check out the Dream It Dose. It's on YouTube. We also have a couple other Dream It Lives coming up. Uh, later this month, a good friend of mine, uh, Americus Reed, who's at Wharton, is going to be on talking from a marketing point of view for startups, how to build a band, brand that drives loyalty. He is very good about brands, fans, and loyalty, so don't miss that. You can also check out, we have Michael Tannenbaum. He's an interesting young man. He's the CFO and CBO of Brex. If you know what Brex is, it's a credit card company for startups is what they focus on. They're already a unicorn worth a few billion dollars. Michael has been involved with both Brex and SoFi. He's raised, I think, about $2 billion total for both of those companies. He's 26 years old. We're gonna talk about what's it like for him in his role as a CFO. How did they do it? How did they pull that off? That'll be on Dream It Live. Then in February, we have last one, we're gonna have Jeffrey Berman for Camber Creek. Andrew Ackerman from Dream It's gonna to talk to him about this is in the prop tech, urban tech, don't miss it. You can catch all these episodes. Please go to dreamit.com slash live and you can subscribe and get notified when that comes on. So that's Dream It Live. You mentioned about RSA, Peter. We'll be at RSA February, I think 23rd is when it starts, 24th, a couple of us from Dream It. If you'd like to meet with us there, you can check us out. We do office hours, meet with startups, love to meet with you. Peter, you're gonna be at RSA, right? Yeah, we are. In fact, uh, cool. we'll, be, we'll have a booth on Broadcast Alley uh, oh, near, cool. the, near the uh, um, keynote speeches. So come by and say hi. 
Okay, good. Well, maybe we'll come by and say hi. We'll do, we'll do a mashup there together. Okay, and then uh, just in our health tech side, we'll be at MedCity Invest in April. Again, we'd love to do office hours, meet with startups or possible customer partners. That would be great. I think, do we have anything else on that? Nope, that was it. So um, again, if you're interested in DreamIt and you're interested in applying on the secure tech side, Peter, just, you know, we look at cybersecurity, you know, uh, anti-money laundering, fraud, physical security. We kind of, that's why we call it secure tech because we go wider than cyber. If you're interested, just go to dreamit.com slash apply. Um, we're just getting ready to kick off the next cohort, so it's not too late. We'd love to know more. Catch us at our events. Peter, thanks for being on again today. It was great. Um, thanks so much for all the information. And we look forward to catching up with you in the future. My pleasure, Steve. Thanks so much. Thanks. Have a great day. Take you care. You too. Bye-bye.